I say, the bridge is over, the bridge is over. Bye bye. The bridge, the bridge is over, the bridge is over. Tony Brewer out of Astoria, New York. Vern Fleming turns on the Jets. Great move. Great move. New York City was number one in basketball. Fleming with the penetration, what a shot! In the 70s and 80s, New York City dominated. New York City, it was always about proving yourself. He has a 42 inch vertical lead. He'll be going up against Larry Michaud. Michaud at 6'9. First meeting ever between these two clubs. Look at Brewer get up. I'm going to get some respect. If you wanted to get on the court, you had to have game. You had to have game. Being on the, being outside on the asphalt court all day and having to make moves to get to the basket and nobody shooting jump shots, it just makes you just be able to penetrate and, and play tough and be tough, you know, and be able to get hit and keep on going. Yeah, no question, in the 70s and 80s, New, um, New York City dominated. We dominated the national stage. It used to seem so huge back in the day. <laughs> Looking at Reese Center now, you know, when I was a kid, it seemed like this place was huge. And I'm thinking part of that might have been like my, my mental imagination of the place, of how great it was with the reputation of the, the great plays that's been through here, the great plays that I played against here. Despite its small size, this place is a giant in New York City stories of basketball. You know, the Queensbridge Housing Project is one of the biggest in America. You know, 96 building, it's huge. In my neighborhood, we would just play on we call it the block, and I'm from 10th, 10th Street in Queensbridge. And it was very competitive, and I had cut off jeans as shorts, because I never played organized basketball, I only played in, in the neighborhood or on the street on my block. I truly believe that the guys before us, Ray Martin, Andy Walker, uh, Paul Mees, I mean, these are guys that played in college, but when we were growing up, there were tournaments in our community, and all, a lot of the games were on a, a block called 10th Street, and that's where all the games were. And we used to sit on the monkey bars, and we used to watch these guys get after each other. After the games, or even before the games, they used to always tell us, you know, watch how we do it. We just used to steal their moves. <laughs> that gym, it was, it was the place to go, the place to be, and, and basketball was, uh, was, was the thing, it, it kept a lot of those guys safe, kept them in good space. My dad introduced me to basketball, and I used to go to Reese Center and watch him. At that time, I just, I, I don't know of any other place that had so many players play high, high level basketball, mostly Division One. You had Willie Sims that went to LSU, Skip Jackson from Queensbridge that went to Wisconsin, Phil Smith, Queensbridge went to New Mexico, Dwayne Johnson, Queensbridge went to Marquette, Myself went to Syracuse, Gene Waldron went to Syracuse, but met a world peace on uh, St. John's and, you know, uh, world champion Lakewood. Kern played um, at the Olympics with Bobby Knight. Fleming certainly doesn't look like he has the uh, after effects of the ankle injury, does it? Minor sprain and then want to fool with it. Of course, you want it for the gold medal game. You know, played at the University of Georgia and played with uh, Indiana for, I think, 10 years, you know. Vic, his twin brother, Went to Xavier. I mean, these are all Division One schools. I mean, all from right here, you know, like a one mile block radius, you know. It opened up at six and it closed at 10, so you want to get your games in. When it stays on and you didn't want to lose because you had to wait maybe three or four games before you get back on. And there you have next. I got, who got next? I got next. I got after next. I got after after next. We had a neighborhood lead, block against block. We'd go to our prospective high schools, like either Long Island City or Monte Cristi or Palm Memorial, wherever. We'd eat dinner, and then we'd hurry up and get the recent and beat up on each other. I mean, I think that's what made us push each other. We made sure we had, you know, we had the winning team all the time. And it's like, why all the time you got Red, and you got Vern, and you got DJ, and you got Ronnie? Well, that's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is. Competition was everywhere. We had, you know, that was our favorite pastime, was being on the court. Um, 
spending all our moments on the court if we wasn't in school. The games were, were fierce. Sometimes it got out of hand. I mean, it always was, you know, you fouled me, no, we didn't foul, and you, you, you're talking about the foul for 10 minutes, you know, and then you got people waiting to play, and they're like, come on, get on with the game. But you, you always had that, but at, when it was all over, it was always love. We had guys like Willie Sims that would go to LSU and make the all-rookie team and then come back and still work out at Recenter and beat us new guys coming up and everything. We'd feel good about it. Oh, Willie's hitting me, making me tougher. We knew what it was about. He was trying to get us ready. And then in turn, we turned around and did the stuff with the younger kids. Like, you know, I'd beat up Dwayne Johnson and, and, and Ron, big Ronnie Williams who went to Florida and I think averaged about 21 a game. Once Ronnie introduced me to indoor basketball, um, organized basketball, I say, um, that's when I would go into Recenter and start playing. It's probably the smallest gym in America. It's not your typical, it's even smaller than some CYO gyms. You take a step out of bounds, you're gonna run into a wall. <laughs> but you know, you just gotta watch out for that wall. <laughs> the wall was right on, and there was no cushion to block you from the wall if you go too fast. And the games were very competitive in Recenter. That's where I started meeting other players, um, other guys from the neighbor, from around the neighborhood, yeah. Queensbridge was kind of uh, known for like having big time rappers, Nas and all of those guys, and the Real Rock saying they all came from here, and basketball players. Ravenswood was a little smaller. They had a few of us that were playing basketball, but to really get the competition and the variety that we needed to be able to prove ourselves and, and, and earn our stripes, we had to come to Queensbridge and show it. So it was easy for Gene and those guys. Like I said, Gene lived right there. Dwayne Johnson lived across the street. Fern Fleming lived um, across the street. That was his block right there. Uh, him, and he had a twin brother, Vic. It was just a basketball mecca around here. It was a college coach's dream. I mean, they just, so many uh, Division One and Division Two players came out of Queens. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Yeah. Every Wednesday, you never knew what pro or great player was going to come play in, in Recenter. Joe Hammett came and played in Recenter. The place was packed. People was up in the balconies. And, and the games were just, it was just a, a, unbelievable atmosphere and you left you left recenter saying wow man this, this is a great place to be